Hey, what's up guys? Tuki here, back again with another episode of A Nation United featuring Team Finland on this occasion. In this episode, we sim through the 2022-2023 season, but before we get down to business, I wanted to mention a couple of things. First and foremost, if you have not checked out the rewriting history video that I did on FHM5, I recommend you check that out, but also... Let me know down in the comments, because with that video, that's the first of what will hopefully be a new series where I get suggestions from you guys in the comments as far as other scenarios that could be done. So if you haven't checked out that video, feel free to. Also, leave me a scenario down in the comments. If you have checked out the video, go back, double check through the comments, and thumbs up any of the comments that you like. I want to make sure that, you know, it's not just, oh, well, these were the first comments that were left, so they're the most thumbs up. I want to make sure that uh, I end up seeing the best ones. Secondly, the start of the Carolina Hurricanes Bunch of Jerks franchise mode series. If you haven't checked out the first episode of that, feel free to. It is very heavy on explaining the rules of that series, as it is going to be the most rule-heavy series that I have ever had. Feel free, again, to check that video out already. Let me know down in the comments your thoughts on the rules. And again, if you see comments that you agree with, Make sure to leave those as thumbs up as well, so I know exactly, you know, what rule change, what tweaks to the rules I should be looking to make. And I wanted to bring up that Hurricane series because I am also using the wheel spin there for no movement and no trade clauses. Which brings me, of course, to what we've been doing in this series, and I do want to mention that while technically I've been throwing out the term, no movement clause, no trade clause, the wheel spin in this series is more so being used as a way to measure loyalty, more more than anything. So, like, the top comment from the last video is that the wheel spin should only be for players commanding 4.5 million or more and in UFA status. We're doing something similar to that with the Hurricane series, but for this series, I wanted to keep it somewhat simplistic because it is already a Nations United to begin with. So, it's not exactly going to be... Like, oh yeah, this is a true no movement or no trade clause. It's more, you know, how loyal do I have to be to these players to avoid me being able to flip players left and right and to quickly acquire certain assets, you know, getting a free agent and being like, okay, I can flip them immediately. That's obviously a little bit cheap. So, obviously, we signed Antiranta two years ago. He has two years left on his contract. I'm not allowed to trade him. But in this past offseason, we signed Yola Mia and I am allowed to trade him immediately, despite it being a three-year deal. So, just to let you know on that front, there is going to be that little bit of separation between going really intense with the rules of no movements, no trades, like we're going to see in Carolina, and keeping that wheel spin, keeping that rule a little bit more simplistic to just being, okay, I'm not allowed to trade these guys for now, but not viewing it as like, oh, well, he's making this much money, so it's a no trade rather than a no movement. We'll keep the uh, the more in-depth aspect of that to the Hurricane series. So that said, this is the team, of course, the best-looking team we've had thus far, and I'm fairly okay, fairly optimistic with the way this team is coming along. Of course, the top line is set, and we had to make sure that we ended up with three of these guys out of the first four drafts. Otherwise, it would have been a little bit tough, but Capo Caco, Simon Tyval, and Brad Lambert will be leading the way. Of course, we signed quite a few free agents, Lekkinen, Armia, Donskoy, have all joined the team. And then, of course, defensively, with prospects like Kervainen, Hainola, and Loxanen stepping up, things are looking pretty damn good for us. And, of course, R.I.P. Pekarene. He'll miss that right leg, or whatever the hell he lost, to fall 10 overall points throughout the course of the offseason. There's really nothing else to do. Let's get down to business. Another year, another season. <clears throat> the voice is given out which is never a good sign because it's the start of an episode. I am holding left trigger, and for some reason it's not working. There we go. That is better. Let's see how the Eagles do this year. Again, I would fully expect it to be our most successful season yet. There's really not a whole hell of a lot we can look to do in terms of potentially making moves if we were to be in a, you know, if we were to be relatively far outside of the playoff structure, which we probably will be, Armia is really the only guy I'd be looking to move. But I suppose that depends on just how far outside of the playoff structure we tend to be. Whether or not it's worth it to flip Armia or just hold on to him with us having him signed for three seasons. So we'll see how it goes. It's definitely a wait and see kind of deal, and I'm very nervous to see how well we do. I mean, you look at I think someone like Sebastian Repo is the perfect example 
of someone who, you know, I mean, I didn't expect him to develop, and he's up to an 81, which is pretty nice. Now, that's not, like, any kind of crazy attribute jump, you know, it's not like a Curtis McElhaney going up to an 89 overall, or a Mike Smith, or something like that, but he's still gone from a kind of, eh, you know, low-end player, someone who can help fill out the lineup early on, to being someone who could be a crucial bottom six player for us throughout the early stages of this series. Unfortunately, we cannot win hockey games right now. We finally get our first win of the season against the Penguins, but what a brutal start that was. One win in the opening month of the season. Call us the Arizona Coyotes because we are done for. Sorry, Arizona, but you know, that's... You know what happened a few years ago where it's like, hey, we're doing okay, and then just, or we're going to be good, and then just nothing. It's looking like what's uh, what's going to be the case here for us, unfortunately. But we will stick with this. I can't promise you anything's in, that anything interesting is going to happen, so maybe it would be worth to start hitting the L key on your keyboard, which, by the way, if you didn't know... That's a way you can skip J to go backwards, K to pause, L to go forward, because YouTube is really weird. But start spamming that L key until you see that we're at the end of the season, because it's going to be probably a lot of a lot of struggling, a whole lot of misery, and just a whole lot of losing hockey games from the looks of it. We're up to four wins halfway through November. It's going to be a very rough season for us yet again. I would like to think it's going to be our most successful season to date. You would think that it would be, given that we have the best roster that we've had yet. But it's not It's not looking too good, is it? Not looking too hot. We do end up beating Winnipeg up to five wins now. At this rate, 15 wins. 15 wins would be good. Split the season into thirds. Five wins in each, and I think I'd be okay with it, but we are absolutely, unless there's a massive turnaround, and you know what, I'm actually going to take a look at the team, unless there is a massive turnaround, we are yet again going to be a high lottery pick team, so we have 13 points, Lambert's actually leading the team, God, excuse me, very, very burpy right now, and I don't know why, Lambert's leading the team, which is very concerning, Kako only has 12 points on the year, 7 for Simon Tyval, and that that's not good. <laughs> That's not good at all. Lekkonen with nine points. Virto with nine. Only three for Sebastian Repo. Sebastian, I just hyped you up. Just hyped you up. Wow, Armia only has five points, too. We can't score. I mean, again, I know our team isn't amazing, but Jesus, we just cannot score. Defensively, I mean, oof, God, they're not really putting up points either. Okay, well, the expectations for this season are officially out the door because just nothing ha nothing is happening. Eunice Corpus, uh, Eunice Corpus Allo can't stop a puck, which isn't surprising because, I mean, that kind of replicates him in real life. That's right, I said it. Not a good goaltender. At least not really. Not that good, at the very least. So, I mean, at this rate, no longer are we hoping that we have a winning team Probably hoping to end up with that number one overall pick yet again. And of course, this will be the first season where it is all computer-generated players, which means I, I genuinely don't know how likely we are to end up with a good fin in this draft. Trading down seems like a very strong possibility, and I have to admit, I am quite thankful that we're not limited to the amount of times I can trade down to the amount of picks that we have like we're going to be in that Hurricane series. Because that's going to suck. That would, that would suck in an instance like this where it's like, okay, there's nobody. We know we're going to end up with some rough players. Here, we should still be able to make something happen and end up with a half-decent player. But i got to admit, disappointed. Didn't want to start thinking of the team as, well, we're still pretty terrible. Again, the offense isn't the greatest. The defense isn't that bad, in fairness. Hell, we've run into playoff teams in other series that have a worse defense than we have right now. It's just those 79-rated players, a couple of 77s in the lineup. It's just not happening for us, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm all right with it. As long as we just continue to pick up a couple of wins here and there. I mean, we're on pace for 15 wins. I'm going to get what I asked for. I mean, granted, it was my... You know, it was my secondary hope. It was my oh, we're screwed. Let me change the goalposts and hope for a better result. That way, 
I'm clearly gonna be feeling better about this season and won't cry myself to sleep because we're actually so close from being a playoff team. You know, that kind of changing hopes and expectations. It's always, it's always great. 15 wins though, there we go. If I had a confetti cannon, I would set it off, which would be very sad because the webcam's not running. <laughs> Just sitting here in a pile of confetti as my team doesn't make the playoffs. That sounds about right, doesn't it? 17 wins after beating the Rangers. I will probably double check the line up here at the beginning of February. More than likely. Maybe. Possibly. Potentially. Maybe. Did we beat St. Louis? We very much did not beat St. Louis. Never mind. I will never... I will never question whether or not we've beaten St. Louis again. You watch. Calling it now. We end up in a Stanley Cup final against St. Louis. Somebody mark the date, mark the time, mark the team. We will end up playing St. Louis in a Stanley Cup final. Just a guess. Why not? Oliver Sheelington. I wish you weren't Swedish. <sighs> I was gonna say I knew he was I knew he was, because of course we had him in the Swedish Nations United that we ran a few years ago. Which isn't that weird for those of you who have been long-term viewers of this channel to say that the Swedish Nation United was a few years ago. I've been doing this for a while at this point, man. It doesn't really register sometimes. It's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. Also weird, the fact that we're about to win 20 games, <laughs> which looks like, uh, I mean, if you were to tell me at the beginning of the season, yeah, you got to turn it around and win 20 games, I kind of would have doubted you if one win through the opening month of the season it wasn't exactly a guarantee, but 19, I mean, then again, we might not win 20 games. I know we have over a month to get there. Okay, there we go. Thank God we beat Calgary. The Hawks are also still somewhat in playoff contention. They'd really have to start winning games. Also, don't know if you noticed, didn't stop the sim at the beginning of February. I'll probably check after the trade deadline to see what's going on. And one of these days... I probably should. I used to. I normally do this on stream if I if I ever end up streaming NHL franchise. Which of course, if you watch the Edmonton, this sounds like I'm just shilling everything else, but it makes sense to reference everything else. If you watch me, uh, you know the. If you watched me series, if you watched the Edmonton and Anaheim playthroughs, of course, I was checking the lineups to see how teams continued to uh, evolve and what their lineups were looking like. Of course, that's a little bit time consuming, so I don't know if we'll do it here. Because Lord knows we have enough to get to, like not making the playoffs. And a very important draft where I think I'm I'm going to double check. Do I want to double check? Kamenev, you are not. No, you're not. I probably wouldn't take that trade anyway, but still. Well, I'm just trying to decide if I want to double check who's coming up in the draft. I don't think I do. I think I'd rather have it be a bit of a surprise until draft day, and then I have to react to it. But Kako's rebounded well. Simon Tavall with some assists. Lambert has 17 goals as a rookie. I'm not upset with that. The offense finally started to get it going. That's certainly a big factor. Heinel is up to an 81. Not bad. And how's uh, Rene doing? 73. Wasn't he a 72? Am I wrong? I could have sworn he was a 72. Damn. One thing to check before we continue on simming. And that would be what's going on with Armia. What is your value at this point? Yeah, I'm not trading him. I could get maybe a low end second if I pair him with some other stuff, a third rounder. I honestly think it'll be more beneficial to keep him. I know I can trade him whenever I want, but I think it would be more beneficial to keep him. Also, Kippersoff. That's going to be a big addition joining the team next year. That's a really good sign. Is there anybody else who's kind of uh, bumped up in terms of their overall? Just Kipper? Just Kipper. What about on the defensive side of things? Not looking too good. Hey, Tiervinen. Up to a 77. All right, we're going to be looking pretty good next year. Vertanen's a 75 as well. Slowly but surely, this team is going to end up being playoff team. But I gotta be honest, I think we're a little bit ahead of schedule. Obviously it not being drafted glory certainly helps and maybe that's just what it is as I'm so used to my teams being terrible for the first decade of a series at this point. But we're gonna be looking pretty good. All the more reason to, uh, ooh, 
Second and a fourth. Rasul Milan a third. I'm intrigued. How good is he? Getting paid quite a bit. 81. Is it worth giving up a second round pick for someone who might end up being a free agent next year? I'm going to say no. We'll hope he's a free agent next year. He'd be a really good addition, but obviously I'm not really in the mood to buy right now when we're not going to be a playoff team. Although, funny enough, I'm not in the mood to sell. As again, Armia, I think, will benefit us a little bit more than getting an extra second or third round pick, which sounds insane when I really think about it. I mean, I could easily, easily double check, see what's going on, see who's looking like, oh, okay, this guy might be a third round pick. And then it's like, oh, yeah, it turns out it would have been a smart idea to trade Armia. But, you know, screw that. Screw doing something smart. Why? Why would we want to do something intelligent in terms of building this team? Let's just keep this blindfold on, roll the dice, and hope for the best. It, I mean, it's gotten us this far, right? Right. Let's be honest. I'm expecting to have terrible luck in the draft. We underperformed this year. Although, did we? We've hit 30 wins. I don't think we underperformed that much anymore. I think we did okay. We're not going to be the worst team in the league. Maybe, okay, you know what, EA, I have a proposition for you. How about, instead of me finishing dead last and losing the lottery, I don't finish dead last and I win the lottery. Sound good? Sounds pretty good to me. Let me know what you think in just a few short moments. Brad Lambert, as a rookie, ends up leading this team in points. 28 goals. That is very promising, although the overall didn't go up, and that is horrifying. As the Flyers make it out of the Metro, we finished with 68 points. Nearly, nearly jumped up to 7th. Buffalo, Tampa, Toronto, and Florida. Dallas, Nashville, Winnipeg, St. Louis, Detroit, who of course we move back to the Central. And the Pacific, Vancouver, San Jose, and Edmonton all make the playoffs. Dallas was the best team. Wow, we were still the worst team in the league. All right, never mind. We did finish dead last. So about that, uh, EA, about that idea of the team and dead last not winning the number one overall pick. If um, if I could just if I could just make a suggestion, don't listen to me. Don't. Now I want you to listen to me on other things like adding roster editing to the game, stuff like that. But or roster sharing to the game. How about how about we win? That'd be great. Even just having the ability to trade a number one overall pick would be amazing right now. Lambert and Kako a tie in the points. Simon Taival also broke 30. Repo did rebound fairly well. Second line all hit at least 30 points. Kervinen, Loxanen, and Risto were up there as well. Let me check for forwards here. So yeah, it, it dropped off a bit. Armia actually had a god-awful season. So did Donskoy in comparison to what they're capable of. So secondary scoring was a massive issue. But still, Lekin and Repo, Kako, all hitting at least 15 goals. I'm okay with that. Defensively, we did very well. I don't expect Nokalainen or Hainola to be point getters. So, overall, I'm cool with how we've done this year. 913 save percentage for Ranta. And a 908 for Corpusala. Not too bad. Thank God we yeah. <laughs> Thank God we signed him after Pekarine fell off that cliff. Had that horrible, horrible accident. That caused his overall to plummet as UC Saros had the most wins. Really? Really. Also, how horrifying is that? Saros, Lukanen. Oh, that's that's depressing. In terms of save percentage, Carter Hart was up there, but doesn't appear to be their starter at an 89 overall. That's insane. Uh, Lukanen is probably going to win the Vezina this year. It's going to be him or Ingram. It just depends on how much EA bases that extra game that Ingram played against the slightly higher save percentage and the extra win of Lokanen, but I think Lokanen here is going to be winning the Vezina, which is amazing for him. And then rookie skaters Nick Suzuki is going to take home the Calder, robbing fellow Hab, Trevor Zegras, and Brad Lambert. Cole Perfetti as well. Decent crop of rookies that season. Very happy with Brad, though. Zegras hit 41 goals. Jesus. Ovechkin. <clears throat> nice. Jack Hughes. Jesus Christ. So Hughes ends up signing at San Jose and crushes it to answer that question of where he went. Backstrom, Wallstrom, Gusev. Of course, you know, creative players love to put up a ton of goals. That's just one of the things about this game. But quite a few 40-goal scorers this year, including Benjamin Perra. 
who is uh, computer generated. So not bad. Not a bad season for us, all things considered. Although we were technically the worst team in the league, I still think it was a decent enough season for us. And not a, not a bad year all around in terms of certain players putting up points. An interesting race there amongst the rookies. We'll see how the playoffs end up going down before we move on to this draft, which is, of course, the main highlight of every episode early on for us, whether in a series like this or Draft to Glory, where we're having to try and pin down the core group of players that will hopefully, eventually, maybe lead us to victory. It all comes down to that draft lottery, though, yet again. And we all know how bad the lotto luck is. However, the luck appears to be the worst when there are actually players I can draft. So if there isn't a Finn in the top five, I feel like we're going to win. Which means that we might be able to pull off a big trade. Now, I'm not saying Lukanen or Line A, but it'd be nice. Uh, it really does come down to whether or not a team wants to trade a player of that high a value. Winnipeg ends up winning the Stanley Cup. Of course, I could throw everything at the wall to try and get Patrick Line. If they don't want to trade him, it's not going to happen. So let's take a look at the playoff tree. Winnipeg beats Tampa in the final in six games. We almost had Jack Hughes against his former team in Tampa in the cup final. The Calder Cup, it's weird how they don't have the logo for the Calder Cup playoffs above the, above the deal there. I never noticed that. That's really weird. Anyway, Rockford beat Providence in seven. I want to see what that Tampa team looks like. I'm pretty sure they are without Braden Point. They are also, or not the Tampa team, but yeah, you know, I want to see what the Tampa team looks like too. So yeah, they are without Braden Point and Hughes. They do have Lundell, which hurts my heart. Because my god, what an addition he would have been. But let's take a look at the cup winning team in the form of the Winnipeg Jets. Line A, Shifley, Wheeler, Veselainen as well. Kyle Connor, Roslovic. Roslovic. Uh, the roster's fairly similar. Outside of the fact that they already sent down a defenseman. Ooh, that defense is rough. But they have Connor Hellebuck putting up a 920. Interesting team to win the cup there. That defense, at least on paper, is not going to be the strongest. In terms of the awards, again, the Stanley Cup goes to Winnipeg. We've seen it go to Vegas, St. Louis, Washington, Philly, and now Winnipeg. Dallas back-to-back -back President's Trophies, and it means absolutely nothing. Ovi wins the Art Ross for the fourth time the past five years, his third in a row. Same story for the Hart Trophy. The Norris goes to John Carlson. We've had five different Norris winners. The Lady Bing goes to Nikita Gusev. The Calder to Nick Suzuki. Vesa Linen won the Con Smythe, the first non-goalie to do it throughout the course of this series. The Vesna does go to Lukanen. Five different Vesna winners as well. Jennings to Vassi, Alexiak to Masterton. O'Reilly wins to Selkie for the fourth time in five years. Ovi, same thing with the Ted Lindsay. And the Rocket Richard. It's been... Uh, Pretty much everybody dominating that you would expect to. Kamel, one of the players I would have liked to have ended up with. Put up the most points there for Hartford. Isaac Ratcliffe was the league MVP. I believe that's Jack McBain scoring the most goals. Kamel was the best rookie. Best defenseman is Johnson. Best goaltender, Jeremy Swayman. Ferguson, MVP of the playoffs. And that brings yet another season to a close. Brad Lambert, by the way. Some of you had to be screaming about that. Up by four. Good progression, and will have a chance to get even better by the time the uh, preseason rolls around. So let's take a look here, shall we? So Simon Tavall is up to an 88. You have Lambert up to an 84. Some decent progression there. Uh, Repo, I mean, you know, it's, they're not green, though, so that's a little bit unfortunate. Decent development for Hainola as well. Technically hit an 81, but that obviously wasn't natural development. Uh, you do have to look at goalies separately. No development there. In the system, Virta is up to an 88. Legit. Tirvainen, Palmu, Kiprasov. Some good growth. Of course, Palmu is 25, so it's not really a big factor. But some decent development from some of our younger players. And they will be you know, joining this team sooner rather than later. Laxo up to a 70, by the way. It's a 19-year-old goaltender. He may just, in fact be the goaltender for the future in this series. Let's move on. Drum roll, please. Do we have a number one overall pick? Please. No. Oh, my God. 
Oh boy, LA and both New York, well, uh, two out of three New York teams. Oh boy, fucking. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even want to know if there's a good player I'm missing out on. I really don't. Oh my God, Ovi retired. Nine hundred and twenty-nine goals. Good Lord. Good Lord. Thornton, Getzlaff, Spezza, Pavelski, and others all call it a day as well. Defensively, Latang, Bufflin. So Bufflin retired as champion, which is pretty cool. Goaltenders, did Rene call it? Yes, he did. Pekka Rene calls it a day. Thank you very much, sir. I hope you enjoyed the money that I, that I gave you for no reason. Joe Thornton ends up being a scout. He finished his career as a devil, which would just be horrible. Well, let's find out if there's anybody that I missed out on and if there's anybody that I could even draft at this point. Good chance I end up taking away that pay. <laughs> Not like this, no. Come on, man. Ah, come on. That's why we didn't win. Because there's a fin. Oh, my God. There's a fin at the top of the board. Jeff Carter or not. Good Lord. Please tell me Los Angeles wants to trade. Please. Ah, all right. He's gone. Let me just sim this to make sure he goes. I hate everything. I hate all of it. Every living organism, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, I hate all of it. Oh, God. All right. Okay. Okay. That's, nope, that's, that's fine. I'm great. I'm doing well. Don't worry. I'm not in pain. I'm not in physical, mental, and emotional anguish. The dog's looking at me funny. <laughs> well, he would have been a nice player to have, don't you think? He, oh yeah, he, he would have been great. Look at that shot. Look at that shot. He would have been, he would have been a good one. He would have been great. All right, is there anybody else? Because Sunkfist doesn't count. We have Ramo at eight, Petri Ramo. Has a good shot at least. Getzloff comparison. Even though he's a two-way, eh, I mean, he's a bigger body, I guess. He's not too, okay, so we have, we have two decent guys here, Drew comparison for Norinen. All right, this might be salvageable. Those are the only two projected in the first round. Good Lord, also as a franchise goalie, I can't have, you rarely see franchise goalies that high projected, at least I don't. And then we have a low elite and a medium elite goalie in the second round. So I have to be... Okay, we got quite a few people in the second round. I have to be smart about this. I have to be very smart about how we're going to approach things here because I could be able to trade down from that fourth pick, but there are players in the first and second round that could be worth it to us. We only have an extra fifth round... Well, yeah, we only have an extra fifth round pick this year, and we have Detroit's fourth Right. I'm not allowed to trade Ranta. Loxo is too good to give up. And then there's no trade value elsewhere. Defensively, there's nobody there that I plan to give up on. There's just... There's not a chance. And the good thing is, I'm no longer restricted to trading someone like Ristolainen. That's a pretty big help. I still have two years left on Nudivara's contract. And I cannot trade Ranta. Aside from that, though, I'm not restricted in terms of moving anybody else. It's just whether or not it would make sense to get rid of Risto. And I gotta be honest, it might be worth getting rid of Risto to bring in somebody younger. Because by the time this team turns the corner and starts making the playoffs regularly, he's gonna be at least 30. There's no way he won't be. But I don't want to get rid of Vertanen. I don't want to get rid of Tirvinen. And nobody else really has value. It's like you have someone like Honka and Kokonen, who I don't think are really going to develop at this point. But there's not a lot there. That's a second, like a low-end second-round pick at best, which might come in handy. And then forward-wise, I mean, there's nobody. Like I can, I could flip Peelman or Peelman, Brian Pillman. I could flip him if we uh, if we wanted to. 
But yeah, there's the only asset that I really have that we could use to go out and get somebody is Risto. Now the question is, with that pick, is there anybody of value that I can pick up? If not, it's probably worth... I gotta be honest, if not, it's probably worth trading down at the very least. It's just whether or not I want to trade down this year, or not this year, but for two first round picks, or if I want to go for like a first and a second. Maybe even two seconds. Maybe we just get one of those players that's projected between eight and ten. Filipula's not looking that good. I'm gonna look at goaltenders afterwards. It'll be a little bit quicker. Longquist doesn't have a ton of value. Barry's not good enough for us. Gleboff isn't going to be available. Is there anybody here? Now, again, I'm not restricted. He's not going to be available. I'm not restricted to just trading for someone who's on the block. But, again, like I can go and show you, like, hey, here's Patrick Lyon's value. It's not going to happen. Here's Lukanen's value. It's not going to happen if they don't want to trade him. There's just no way. It's not how it works, especially on hard trade difficulty. So... Right now, this is our best bet, but if a team like Philadelphia keeps putting Carter Hart on the block because of their Vasilevsky acquisition, then there's a chance somebody we want could end up being here. I saw those two values, and they were younger players, and I thought we just got a little bit lucky, but we didn't. And then Winnipeg, yeah, they're not going to look to move anybody. So, like, Patrick Laine's value, for example, I mean, it's through the roof. That's just not going to happen. Even Christian Veselainen, I wouldn't be able to get for just this first. So, that is the uh, the tough spot. And to be honest, unless someone like a Lukanen was available, there's nobody worth going out to get as a goaltender because we have that goalie coming up through the system, and it's looking like he's actually going to develop. So, I'm thinking trading down is the best way to go. It's just a matter of how much we can get. Like, even if I wanted to go for Line A, like, it would have to be the first and Risto. And I don't think that's worth it. I just don't. I think there'd be more value in trading down with this pick and bolstering up the overall squad depth instead of giving up a defenseman, a decent pick, and trading, you know, trading for one player. So, I think... I think we are pretty much set with where we're going to be and what we're going to do. Yeah, Lukanen has full value. He's a monster. So, we'll let the Rangers make that pick, and they do. We are going to call a timeout, and I'm going to double-check who is interested in trading down. Colorado has numerous picks. Pittsburgh do not want to give up that selection, and it could be harmful here for us if nobody wants to make a trade. Wow, Colorado. Three picks. Damn. I think we're in a little bit of trouble here. I think we're going to have to trade for second round picks this year and a first round pick next year. That's what it's looking like because nobody wants to trade down and whoever I draft out of the two fins that we have available to us, their value is not going to be worth what this pick is worth. So unless Ottawa wants to make a deal, and they do... We trade down. There's a chance one of the two players could still be left, so I'm going to do this first. And if it works, cool. If not, it's fine. So I'd like... Mm, they don't have a second round pick. Can I also get your first next year? I'm going to be a little bit ridiculous about this. Because honestly, I don't recall there being any rules to this series. Aside from, uh, aside from the wheel spins, right? So that was the only really tack on. So I am going to try to be as aggressive as possible here. There is no way that goes through, obviously. But I want to be as aggressive as possible and get back the most that we possibly can. The two first probably won't go through, but still, process of elimination... We rule out every option that we have. There's no way it's going through, though. I just I had to hope. So we'll aim for... We'll take out that first. And to be honest, we're going to aim for this. This would be a hell of a bounty. There's no way they do it. I'll take out the third next year. Still absolutely no interest, huh? If I take out another third... How close are we? 
quite close. So I have the option of going for a first, a second, and a third, and having to add on a little bit more, or potentially a first and three second rounders. It's just what do I think gives us the most value? And that second rounder is going to be fairly valuable because I have to trade up anyway. So I think I'm going to look to make this deal happen. I'll give up that sixth round pick. Still rejected because quite close. Who the hell knows what that means? What about the Detroit fifth? Is that good? Still no. And apparently even further away. The response system really needs to be improved. How about a fifth and a seventh? We move down six spots, but pick up a second and a third round pick. Oh my god, come on EA. <laughs> come on, it's so frustrating sometimes. Again, the actual response system, like the, the written responses need to be better, flat out. Holy shit, what is quite close according to EA? My god. Dad, are we almost there? Yeah, we're quite close. How far is that? 7,000 miles, honey. We'll be there soon. Come on. <laughs> Two fifth round picks? Is that enough? I, I, I just can't even. What about if we also add a seventh? Is that enough? Please. Thank you. We trade down six spots to the 10th overall pick. No guarantees that we hold on to it. Ottawa ends up getting a Robidas, which is a very good pickup for them. Good old Robida. Stefan Robida. So the question is whether or not we still have a Finn available. And we don't. Both went with the pick before. So we're going to be trading down again. Right. Actually, we're not going to be making a pick in the first round whatsoever. Our next targets, our first targets, are going to be Peltonen, who we might be able to, yeah, it's just, all right, so 39th and 40, 39th and 41st, okay, I can make that happen, I can make that happen, so 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, Colorado can kick rocks, let's jump up a little bit early, try to get this deal done with Minnesota, just because, again, Colorado can kick rocks, and you never know if the AI is going to go off the board a little bit, so I might... They don't want to trade their first next year. Damn it. Did Colorado want to trade their first next year? I have to find a perfect match here. They don't either. Okay. Whoa, wait. Jesus, EA. What are you even doing right now? We go back over. Pittsburgh and Florida. Pittsburgh. They do not want to trade the pick because, of course, they don't. And Florida... Do you want to trade your second round pick this year? You do, and you have a couple of them, and that could be very, very useful to me. Okay, and I just hit multi-select, and it didn't select. This game is struggling right now. So I was going to try to go for a first next year, and I think I still will for how low value it is. Right, so we go for a second this year, a first... And I gotta be honest, I'm just gonna tack on an extra third as well. Eh, let's let's go overboard. What do you think? What if I take out that second? What? I hit down. Oh, I see. Is that little glitch where you can't hit down? You can hear me hitting the controller trying to go down, and you have to hit over first and then go down. Very dumb. That also didn't go through. What about the second? 39th overall. You also give us a first. And uh, that'd be great for me. Cool. So we get a first next year, and we get a second in this year's draft. It's not quite as soon as I was hoping, but we do have the first pick of the second round as well, so I should be able to get those top two players, and that's looking pretty good for us. Didn't expect that to trade down this much, but I can't say that I am surprised. So as far as who is available to us, it's going to be Peltonen and Hakarainen as our two pickups here. I'd like to get Tuka Matanen, I guess it would be. He has a good shot. Flurry comparison. No guarantees we'll be able to pick him up, though. Although, he is basically the last player in the second round that I'm interested in. You have Letnin as a low four. He's okay. Another low four. Are these the last two half-decent players in this draft for us? The answer there is yes. No? Okay, not quite. Uh, Petri Petinen also looking okay. So I'm going to have to trade up again in the second round. I'll use picks to do that. We'll look to pick up Petinen 
But Lettinen and Emanen, I just, like, they're low fours, man. And you've seen how low fours like Honka have been developing. That's why I avoid that potential. So it's a little bit rough to sit here and try and target the top fins in each draft. But that's the best way to do it. So we are... Uh, we, we are going to be pretty limited with what we can do here. It's a pretty straightforward approach. But we will go ahead and select Pelton in first because Hakarainen should still be there with that next pick. So Tuomo Peltonen, well-rounded. Alex Petrangelo comparison is a low elite defenseman. Let's do it. 63 overall. Not bad. Now we just have to hope that an AI team doesn't go off the board to take our goaltender. And they did not. Perfect. Perfect. Now it's just a matter of whether or not we're going to be able to get the other forward who is projected to be drafted 46th, but potentially 44th. So Hakarainen, welcome. 65. So we need to try and make another deal right now, but the good thing is we have the mid-round picks to trade up here. Philly wants to make a deal happen. We ideally would keep a third round pick. So let's use... So we have an extra first and an extra second next year already. Let's use this Ottawa third, a fourth, and a sixth. Is that enough to move up? Not quite. Damn. Let's also throw in a, a fifth rounder next year. Philly, what do you think? Damn it. Uh, how about a fourth rounder next year? That should work, I'd like to think. Wow. Really, this is uh, this is extortion at this point, but it's worth it for me because we don't have anything else to do in this draft. I cannot believe that still didn't go through. Holy hell. All right, what about an extra fourth, an extra fifth, and I will gut our mid-round picks next year to make this happen. Are you serious? They're going to make this pick before I can do anything, aren't they? Jesus. How much more do you want? How about another fifth round pick down the road? I cannot believe this. Wow. Okay. Uh, again, I kind of have to leave a third round pick if I want to get that other guy. But I'll see what I can do later. So let's go two third round picks here. And of course, I'm going to try to get back a little bit more from you, you absolute toolboxes. So let's go a fifth and a seventh and see what you think. There we go. So we get the deal done with Philly. It's a little bit difficult, but that's okay. We're going to make this pick. It's a little bit off the board, but not by much. Tuka Matanen, welcome aboard with that near pro caliber shot. He, oh my dude, this game is acting so strange right now, like lag wise. It's crazy. 62 overall, medium top six. Not too bad. So the last guy that we were targeting in this draft is Pettinen, 118. Right. Right. So, let's sim through. Oh my god. I hit down first. Thank you. Let's uh, sim to the next round. And we should be able to sim through this round as well. Math, it's easy. There we go. So let's talk, let's talk to Ottawa here to get our own fourth round pick back. See what we can do. So yeah, we should be able to get this deal done, no problem, actually. We should. Although in fairness, we have the 116th. He was projected to go where? I might technically not even have to make this deal. Where was he projected to go draft uh, to go in the draft? I think it was 118, was it? Oh god, wasn't it? I think. Uh possibly. 118. 115 on the board, though. I don't think he's going to be available if I wait. And as it is, we have to get rid of that sixth round pick anyway. So we might as well get this deal done. And just see if that's enough. Ottawa, what do you think? Of course not. A trade makes all the sense in the world and is a fairly realistic one. So why would it go through? Extra seventh. Thank you. So we'll go ahead and get our last player here. Only four players will be drafted by the Espo Eagles in this draft. That's because none of the other ones are good enough or it's too much of a risk to swing and a miss on the picks. So he's a 59 overall, but it'll have to do for us. That does it 
for this draft. Again, only four players drafted, but we do pick up some draft picks for next year as well, which could come in handy as we will go, hopefully, through the re-sign phase here relatively quickly. Oh, God. Not with that many scouts. Not with that many scouts expiring. Oh, boy. Mr. Burgundy. Son of Ron. Please come back. Draper. Mitch. Son of Chris. Welcome back. Hopefully. Uh, LeBeau. Son of... I can't think of a LeBeau. Is Dick LeBeau a person? Matt Jacobs. Son of... Somebody. Uh, Jude Letty. Nick's sister, maybe. 52, maybe mother. Welcome, Miss Letty. Uh, and, uh, well, Mrs. Letty. And Yuha Pekahitinen, son of a man with an even longer name than his, I'm sure. Welcome back. And as far as the re-sign phase is concerned, with, 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 let's see what we're dealing with here. So, Corpusalo's deal is up. Makaniemi's deal is up, and Justice's deal is up. We have to sign Loxo, which we know we're going to do. It's fairly straightforward. Okay, Ryan, we're not going to sign yet. I got to be honest. I don't even know if I want to sign Justice here. I'm tempted to just let go of people and see what we're dealing with on the open market. How much is Justice looking for? It's not going to hurt, though, to bring Justice back for that extra year. Makaniemi, there's a decent chance he could go up in overall, too. So, you know what? I'm going to offer him a one year for the max contract, and Corpusalo can go. And that way, too, I still have room to sign one more goaltender if there's somebody who's half decent on the market. Defensively, Nokalainen, who is now 23, needs his first contract, and we're not paying him all that much, regardless. So, I think we're going to probably. Let me know what you think, but I think we're going to avoid spinning the wheel for him. I don't think it's that big of a deal. You know what? No. Again, it's a loyalty thing. It's a loyalty thing. So, I am willing to offer him a three-year deal. And as far as staying loyal is concerned... Actually, well, in fairness, it would be... Don't have to stay loyal at all. Stay loyal for one year, two years, all three. That is what it should be. And uh, bam, and bam. What do we got? <sighs> it's going to be one year, which I am very much okay with having to stay loyal to him for one more season if he signs that deal. So, Nokalainen will stay loyal to you for one season. Lava Linens, it's not going to be as big of a deal. Here's the issue, though, with Lava Linen and Renanen. Neither are going to get that much better. And I gotta kinda worry about some of the other younger guys that we have coming up. So I gotta be honest. I think these two are gonna get dropped for now. Although they're not that. It, I'm gonna have to add things up here. Tirvainen definitely should be playing in the NHL or the AHL next year. I know technically we'd be giving up a year of his ELC. Which actually has me kind of worried because he might end up being half decent and we're probably not gonna be good that, you know, that good next year. For Tannen. Needs to be signed. Is there anybody else? Uh, medium seventh here, Temu Hikala. Seventh round pick. Goodbye. We do not need you. So technically our defense next year is going to be one, two, three, probably four, five, six with Pirnez. Seven, eight. You know, I think we just bring everybody back. Now that I'm looking here, we could probably afford to let go of one person. But I think we just uh, I think we just bring everybody back. So Lava Lina needs to be signed. Renanen, Renanen, whatever it is. He's looking for a one-way deal. So I'm gonna give him one by one. I don't really think we have to spin the wheel for him. He just he's not gonna have any value, right? Really, I'm only worried about it being like okay, players that have value. Uh, Honka, we'll give you a little bit more money. I don't think we again have to worry about him. He's going to have a little bit of money as a prospect, or a little bit of value as a prospect, but nothing too crazy. Uh, Donskoy. Hmm. I'm going to let him go for now. Good chance we bring him back. Koivinen needs to be signed in as a medium nine. 
I'm good with that. We'll give him a little bit more money just to make sure he's back. Uh, Manalinen hasn't been that bad for us, but we're going to drop him as well. I think I'm also going to drop Petrus Palmu. I don't think he's going to do that well. Nurmi at 24, but medium bottom 6. We're going to drop him too. And Nordgren, ah, it's a tough one. I'll bring him back. He might have a slight chance to get a little bit better. I'll give him a one-year deal, and that should be fine. So Koivinen and Nordgren will be brought back, but otherwise we're going to have quite a few roster spots to fill. Honestly, I think it's gonna. it might be the same thing with Lekin and Salamaki. I just kind of want to see who's out there, just to make sure we have roster spots. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to drop all four of these free agents, and we are going to see what that, you know, what's out there just in case. If we lose a Lekkonen, it's not that bad. And, of course, we lost our two uh, cap whales, we'll say. And then center, Simon Tyval needs a deal. And I will, uh, actually in fairness, might be able to drop that down to 5-5. Five, five. I'm not getting rid of him. I'm not spinning the wheel for him. Virta took a step up. Lamico. It might be a waste of time because odds are I'm going to be bringing back a lot of these other guys here. But we're going to let pretty much everybody else go and see what we're dealing with at the start of free agency. I don't know. Might just be the better way to go in case we do have some players available that are worth bringing back. But the defense is pretty much set. And actually, as a matter of fact, everybody accepted. So it's pretty straightforward. Let's just double check. We have $38.3 million to work with. Everybody is signed. Let's see what the free agent list is looking like. And I might just leave you with a nice little cliffhanger there in case there is a decent enough player that is worth signing. And if there's not, then all of our money goes back to the players that we just got rid of. We'll have a decent amount of wheel spins to handle there on that front in terms of loyalty. We'll take it from there. Let's see, are we getting lucky with any big name free agents this time out? Holy shit.